Hello and welcome back to Pendor, and we're here attempting to attack some Mist Mountain bandits. Now, obviously, basically what we want to do is we want to try to get as many of these kinds of encounters as possible, because if we do that, we're going to be able to level ourselves up. We're going to be able to earn additional experience. Obviously, if you are able to get a couple of kills, it really very much helps. Um, but sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, as we've seen, that just does not work because you are gonna either be in a situation where you get headshot out of nowhere that's happened to me multiple times we know that and uh, generally because pendor is initially very very tough and it does tend to remain that way for quite some time you do have to be a bit more on the ball you know in comparison to other experiences uh, especially the base game, obviously. The base game is very, very lenient in comparison. Anyway, um, yeah, what I should probably do is I should probably let our heroes select from the gear pool, but I haven't actually set that up yet. So we're going to be doing that um, in due time. Uh, I'm probably going to forget about it almost instantly after doing this, but it doesn't really matter too much, I suppose, because we will eventually do it, and there are just very, very few things that can actually provide any kind of upgrade at the moment. So that's the reason why I'm kind of being a bit lax on that. Anyway, we're going to try to attack this group as well, if I can. There's actually a pretty significant number of people in the area. And I'd like to try to eliminate these as best as I can. Now, what's really cool, actually... Well, okay, there are two things here. One is really, really bad, and another is really, really good. Now, I, I, so it's basically, do you want the good news or do you want the bad news? That's basically what's going on here. Anyway, the good news, I'm going to start with the good news. The good news is that enemy forces that you attack, and if there's an ally near you, the ally is not going to join your battle. I know, I know, it, it seems kind of, kind of funny for me to say that's the good news but yes in this case in this very specific case where we are actually attempting to get experience actually attempting to level up our forces get some get some money and so on and so forth yeah that is a that is a good piece of news right there however on the flip side to that then you obviously have the other thing where they don't join you allies don't join you that's obviously a bit of a problem because that means that yeah, you're going to have some issues actually finding some assistance when you need it. When you need it, when you need it the most, actually. Um, so yeah, that's obviously going to be a bit of a problem. However, um, apart from that, obviously, you do have the other, the other thing, which could also be construed as um, bad news, maybe, potentially, is that enemies are also going to bring a friend very, very often. So if they are near to you in any way... Well, you can best bet they're going to bring those people, whoever is nearby to you. That is literally just going to happen every, almost every single time. Um, because the bring a friend radius is significant. And I'm thinking that the mod creators, they probably did that for a very specific reason. Because the reason that I'm thinking of right now is that they have actually done that for the Noldor. The Noldor obviously are um, pretty important later on down the line. I need three Sumter Horses, by the way. So I'm actually looking for a Sumter Horse right now. I'm thinking the Saddle Horse, the Swayback Saddle Horse, and I'm going to just get the Sumter Horse instead. There we go. It's going to cost me a little bit of money, but yeah, I think that's kind of worth it. Mercenary sharpshooter right here, not going to be doing anything with this. There we go. And we're just going to continue asking for rumors, basically, because if we do this, it is inevitably going to spawn more enemy armies over time. I'm actually just going to save real fast because I've done a lot of uh, progression and uh, don't really want anything to go wrong. Anyway, um, what I also need to do is I need to, I, I think I have three Sumter Horses now. So let me actually just take a quick look at that. Let me see, I have, uh, let me just put them all in the top row. So yeah, we have one, two, three, yes indeed. So we have three Sumter Horses, that's what we need. And then we also need, um, I think it is three, uh, five tools? No, I'm actually not entirely sure how many tools we need. Um, but I'm thinking we don't need that many. 
Um, but I'm not going to buy tools from here. I'm actually going to go over to the uh, cheap iron place. Because going to the cheap iron place is just... I mean, that makes all the sense in the world, doesn't it? You know, if you go over to the iron place, you're going to have a great time. Ooh, yes. Shadow Wolves. This is obviously a knighthood order. Yeah, so basically you can join a knighthood order later on in the game. And you can do um, quests for them. And you can earn reputation with them. And inevitably you can um, hopefully do some pretty cool stuff. Yeah, hopefully do some pretty cool stuff. Anyway, we've got some more refugees potentially available here as well. Please don't slow me down. Thank you very much. Let's go and attack them. We've got more battles in the first... I don't even know how, how many minutes. In the first, I don't know, seven minutes of this particular episode than we have had in the entire series so far, I believe. But that's generally how it is, you know? That is generally how it is in Pendor. You know, initially, you're going to have these kinds of situations where you just kind of have to be really cautious. You're going to have to be really cautious most of the time, and then only when you have a bit more confidence, a bit more power, the, only then you're going to be able to take the, um, take the initiative. But thankfully, I'm actually leveling up quite nicely here. We've got some great pieces of loot that I can also then sell and hopefully trade for a little bit of a um, little bit of iron as we go ahead here. We're going to be recruiting these refugees. Thank you very much. And uh, we might as well take the robbers as well. There we are. And oh, hello. There's Wolfboat. Mm, yes, I'm still actually kind of frustrated and a, a bit um, a bit angry actually at the Ravenstone vassals. I'm obviously feigning. Uh, feigning anger at the moment because let's face it it's not their fault they're not actually in an army or they you know they're not having a marshal lead them at the moment so it, you know it's it's nothing to be surprised about that the vassals of Ravenstern did not decide to attack you know that's just purely not going to happen most of the time because the AI is, of course, going to look out for themselves. They, that, that's just what they do, you know? They just look out for themselves almost all the time. So there's nothing really to, you know, as I say, be too surprised about. Anyway, so yeah, tools here are actually pretty expensive still. I think we need... Is it... I think we need two or one? I'm actually not entirely sure. Well, whatever the case, I'm going to purchase some. And then we're going to go and look for some dried meat. All right, so we're right next to Yavik's home at the moment, and we're going to be attacking some Vanskari raiders. Now, these guys actually don't have anything that I need, with the exception of a massive, massive javelin to the face. As you could quite clearly tell, yeah, they just completely murdered me. Yeah, all right, well... <laughs> oh, that's a classic and a half, isn't it? Yeah, how wonderful. How absolutely wonderful. Oh well, never mind. Yeah, I mean, I did say in the previous episode, if you're going to attack Vanskri raiders, please be careful about their thrown weapons. Because their thrown weapons are just going to absolutely murder everything. And, well, there you go. That's exactly what happened. Um, yeah, okay. So, just to update you a little bit on what's happened. I found Anson. Anson is a fantastic character. He can be made into pretty much anything you want. He also does become a very good... I think I made him a vassal in a previous series as well. He is actually a very good vassal. He's a great medic. Um, so, yeah, generally depends on what you want to do, of course. But, um, yeah, he's great. He's really, really cool. Anyway, um, I'm actually thinking that maybe I'll use one of these instead. Uh, no, maybe not. No, no, actually, maybe not. I don't think that's particularly useful. Um, but yeah, I have him now, so he's actually quite useful. As you can see, I've also sorted out their automated, um, <laughs> automated leveling, uh, or shall we say upgrading for their gear. Um, so that's actually rather nice, and what we can now do is we can just take all of this stuff, as you can see, it's just going to be super, super useful for us. And there you go, look at that, we actually gained levels, Anson has gained a level as well, he's, he's now level 2. I actually have no idea what I should really spec him into, to be honest. I'm thinking we'll probably begin specking him into, I don't even know... You know what? I'm going to I'm going to just leave it for now because I'm 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 going to have to think on it because what I really want to make sure we do, let's not level these guys up. 
Uh, <laughs> we need those. We need those the way they are at the moment. I did actually lose one as well, which I'm very, um, yeah, well, not irritated, but I'm I'm very disappointed that one of them got eliminated in that um, in that wonderful battle there. Anyway, I have four in power draw, so the best thing that I can do now is probably to level up my horse archery skill a little bit. I don't have any horse archery, and if we want to be any good at using our bow, that's the way to do it, isn't it? Anyway, I'm actually going to be using the um, two-handed... Oh, this is a polearm, actually, which is hilarious. Not entirely sure if I'm on board with using a polearm, to be fair, but oh well, never mind. I think it's going to be fine. Anyway, we can now sell all of this stuff. I just got to be careful not to sell the tools. We're going to sell absolutely everything that we have available here. Um, there we go. I don't need to sell the fish, do I? I mean, if I sell... I could sell the cheese. The cheese sells for actually quite a, quite a decent amount. And we don't need to level up steward or anything like that. So I'm thinking that, um, you know, if we just sell a little bit of this cheese here, it's probably going to be quite nice. There we have it. Okay, and we can also sell that. That was Anson's old clothing. And there we have it. Okay, so yeah, we're also obviously going to be purchasing some flax. I thought I would just literally come around here just because we have the opportunity to do so. Because I was right next to it in uh, in Centerfall. There's Sir Alistair there. We might want to get him, but unfortunately I don't have the ability to do that either. Um, so yeah, that's obviously... Ah, hello there. Ah, three Omen Seekers. Ah, oh, well, I have no room in my party, sir, which is somewhat unfortunate, but yeah. Omen Seekers, they're, in, in my opinion at least, I think they're really, really good, at least early game. And if you have the money to spare, they're not too bad. You can actually hire mercenaries here, apparently, but you are going to need a gold bar, as you can tell. That's kind of the reason why I haven't really explored that option yet, because a gold bar... Hmm... Not entirely sure how I'm going to get a gold bar at this stage in the game. But, yeah. Anyway, um, that, yeah, I just thought I'd let you know about that. Because someone did say that I can recruit mercenaries from there. And, well, yes, you can. But you're going to need a gold bar first, at least. That's what it says to me right now. Anyway, there is actually something I wanted to do in this area. There is a band of snake cultists i'm not entirely sure why there are snake cultists all the way over here but let me actually just see if i can find them um it's it's probably going to be highly unlikely i'm going to find them at all but you never know May, maybe i'll get um ah there they are yes azi dahaka death cult marauders now if i can actually get these guys and defeat them which i I don't know whether we're going to be able to, but if I can defeat them, we will have the opportunity to recruit, or hopefully have the opportunity at least, to recruit a bunch of very high-level troops. Now, this is a very difficult battle, and this is, this is what's really funny about this, actually. You'd think that this is going to be a super, super easy one. Maybe it is, but I remember very specifically that if you go into a battle against these guys um, early on, you're going to have some huge problems in general because they are very, very strong. They have great armor. I mean, you can see there I only did 16 damage with 190% speed bonus. Um, but yeah, I do actually need a larger lance as well. I'd love to be able to do damage here. And I'm talking about actually killing someone. I'd love to be able to kill one of these nobles so that we can actually get... Um, the experience for it. It's going to be quite large, I think. Maybe? And so a couch lance would really pay off here, but unfortunately it doesn't seem as though I'm actually going to be able to. Maybe I can do a little bit of damage here around the side? No. No, I, I don't think I'm going to be able to, unfortunately. It's just too... There's just too many people around here, and the, uh, the nobles are making it very difficult for me to actually get into any kind of good position. So... Highly unlikely we're going to be able to do anything here. Nope. Oh well, never mind. You know, that's just how it goes sometimes. That's just how it goes. And I am very, very pleased actually that we were able to achieve victory. And now this is this is exactly what I'm talking about. Look at what kind of things we can now recruit here. Look at these guys. These Maiden Cavalry especially are going to level up into some great, great things. Um, okay, so now this is... <laughs> this is now a bit of an issue. Because now I'm, now I'm not sure what we want to go for. 
because these fears vein light infantry they're probably the, the lowest level things that we have apart from the monks of course um so i'm thinking we'll probably get rid of these we'll take the desert hunters and the stalkers and the maiden cavalry these guys do level up into maiden adventurers i think that they're very very good i don't really care too much about mercenary warriors um, the Vanskri Raiders as well, as well as Marauders, not particularly my jam here, so we're probably just going to be leaving the rest of them, even though I would love to be able to take all of them, but that's just not how it goes. Anyway, Snake Cultists defeated, yes, wonderful, wonderful, and we also have some Vanskri Raiders over there, but they don't have anything that we need. Technically, I could just fight them for, you know, for gear and so on, but you know what, I, I think we're... I think we're okay at the moment. I mean, I have another week to be able to make the amount of wages that I currently require to pay my troops, which I don't think is too bad, especially considering I'm going to be look at the look at the the sell price of this flax right now. It is utterly insane because we literally purchased this stuff for um, I think it was like 70 each, and then it eventually spiraled all the way to 150. But I was mostly purchasing that from a pure profit standpoint because I was trading it for a bunch of my own gear. So I can basically sell all of this for this amount of profit, which is crazy. I love that. Absolutely love that. So yeah, that's great. And um, wow, I almost bankrupted this guy, which is actually really... That, that doesn't usually happen, you know? That doesn't usually happen. Okay, so yeah. There is another traveler here. There we go. Mercenary sergeant. Yeah, there. Okay. I'm also going to be, of course, looking out for um, other companions, but I haven't actually decided what kind of companions I want. But obviously, if we have Leslie and Anson right now, it kind of locks us into a couple of, um, a couple of choices. So, you, you know, just bear that in mind. So if you do know already what's uh, what's going on in regards to companions, then you kind of you can kind of work out who I'm going to go for. But I don't currently have the cash anyway to be able to recruit most of them. Ah, hello, Red Brotherhood hideout people. Well, not hideout, but Red Brotherhood people from Avondor. I wouldn't mind actually attacking them or getting into a battle with them. That would be really nice. I think we might actually be able to get quite a few kills against them potentially. So it would be great. No, please don't go in there. Please don't go in there. Yes, there we go. Okay, fantastic. Can I? Yes, there we are. Now, this is exactly the reason why I say sometimes this is good. Sometimes not having allies be able to join you in your own battles. Sometimes that's good. Sometimes that's really good because then it enables you to have these kinds of scenarios where you can take advantage of you know, the larger army pushing them into, well, into you or uh, into somewhere else or whatever, and it makes a huge difference. However, you know, <laughs> then obviously the flip side is that they're going to not join you and not help you against really, really tough opponents. For example, let's say that I wanted to attack a unique spawn and I'm in range and for certain they would be able to join me. Like, for example, with Wolfboat, you know, with Wolfboat uh, in the previous episode, I would have literally been able to get that guy into a battle against, I don't even know, 800 or so Ravenstern. But of course, because of the way that it worked, no, we, we, just, we just couldn't do it. There's just nothing I could do about that, unfortunately. So yeah, that's the kind of thing that can happen. And that's the kind of thing that is sad. But you know, then as I say, on the flip side, then you're going to, well, you're going to be more vulnerable otherwise. Anyway, Leslie did uh, advance in level. We're going to be leveling her up in a second, but I just want to kind of get over to the uh, the ruins because that's where we're currently going right now. wouldn't mind actually fighting these brigands here. There are a couple of brigand camps and so on and so forth around here, which do tend to spawn quite a few bandits. These fellows don't actually have anything particularly useful. As far as I'm aware, at least, maybe they do drop some good loot. Um, but from my experience in Pandor, I haven't actually fought these guys that much at all. Um, I want to eliminate that guy if at all possible. Oh, I, I got killed by two damage, really. Oh, well, never mind. I kind of wanted to kill the, uh, the squire. Because if I could have killed the squire, 
we're going to get much more loot, or shall we say, we're going to get much higher level loot, um, because that's the thing that they, I think they instituted that a while ago, um, at least I did mention that in the Iron Man challenge, I think Iron Man challenge series or something like that, I don't know, anyway, it's, it was over three years ago that I created that, so obviously there are going to be some things that I'm going to forget, anyway, let me see here, uh, oh, oh, I got a lance. <gasps> it's actually better. Look at that. Yes. Yes. It's actually better than what I have. Um, I, I don't know whether it's going to work for me, but why not? Why not? It's 180 reach instead of 130. We are going to be positively cooking with gas now. So that's going to be very nice. We got some brigands here. Should I go over to Marlians first? I'm not sure whether I should really do that. Mm, you know what? I think it's going to coincide with us uh, getting over to daytime if I make my way over to the ruins now. And I think that's probably a better idea because we can only go to daytime here. We, you know, there's, there's not going to be anyone there in the, in the night, of course, as you might expect. So I'm just going to wait here for a little bit of time. There we go. Now it's noon. I'm going to save because I just don't want to chance any kind of crash. And okay. Do I have to wait a little bit longer? Because... Hmm. Or maybe it's not the case, because I actually remembered that this is indeed a thing that you've got to trigger. You have to activate this. So basically, I'm looking for a skilled builder. Do you know of any? Yes, sir, I do. Two builders live in our village. Normally, I would recommend my nephew Gregard, but he is currently visiting our cousins in Tarburl. The other one is Bernard. I'll hire Bernard, let him know, and give these instructions to the old ruins we had spoken about before. Of course, I'll pass the message, sir. So yeah, this is what I had to do before going over to the old ruins. Hopefully I'm going to be able to make it there in time. Yes, I am. And now we can meet the builder. Thankfully, they don't make me walk... I was going to say, hopefully... <laughs> Never mind. I was going to say, thankfully they don't make me walk through the entire scene to be able to, um, you know, speak to the guy. But no, they do. <laughs> <laughs> the classic warband. Oh yes, that is that is absolutely the classic. Anyway, he's going to be here, and hopefully we'll be able to um, get the next stage of the quest. And hopefully I have what I need. I mean, I obviously don't have the uh, don't have the meat right now, and I also don't have one of the other ingredients. I can't remember what the other ingredient is right now. Oh, we got Leslie and Anson running around here. That's actually quite funny. How did they get here before me? I, I have no idea. Anyway, hello. There he, there he is. Welcome, sir. I said, hello, Master Bernard. Good to have you here. What do you think about this place? Could I establish a permanent base here? The valley has potential, sir, but it will require a lot of work and a lot of labor. Isn't that the same thing? Anyway, where would you exactly need to make it happen? Judging by the amount of work that needs to be done, 20 men should be enough to make this place up and running within two weeks. We'd need tools, strong horses for some heavy lifting, food, and a barrel of ale to keep morale high. Yeah, so obviously that's, um, that's, that's the thing that I was forgetting. So we need ale. Right. So let's have a look. Um, so, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, sir. Uh, you're not serious, sir. Is he serious right now? I actually want to, um, I want to drop these off. I want to drop these refugees off right now. I, I, I need those. I need... Um, uh, basically, what you could do, or at least what I thought you could do, is you can hand off specific parts of the uh, workforce before you complete the entire thing. You don't actually need to get the amount of troops that you actually need uh, to complete the quest. At least that's what I thought. Um, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Maybe I'm actually wrong about that. Maybe my memory is not serving me particularly well on that. But anyway, we're just going to sell all of this. There we go. 1,200. That's actually not entirely bad. We've got a barrel of ale right there. And we also have dr some dried meat. So let's actually have a look. Uh, I think I need a lot more than this, actually. Did, what did he say? He, need, he needed some food. So I'm going to assume that we need five because I have three tools. So there's no way we're going to need only three meat. I feel like we're probably going to need more than that. Um, so I'm not entirely sure where to go. Marlians, I guess. Um, I, I'm going to assume that villages also have the dried meat that we need, maybe, potentially. I'm not entirely sure about that. Um, but yeah, I'm actually a bit... Um, 
a little bit worried about the fact that they are not allowing me to drop off the um, drop off the refugees. I can only hope that that is because they want me to get all of the other ingredients first. And I now have all the other ingredients, so I can actually make my way into the map once again. I actually can't believe that they uh, they make you walk through the entire map to get there every single time. Greetings, sir. Do you have all necessary supplies? Yes, I have everything with me. There we go. Here you go. There we are. W wonderful. Uh, all we need now is 20 strong men. Okay, so 20. Ah, okay. So, th yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So, this is what I obviously forgot before. Basically, what you can do is you can leave as many um, as many workers as you have in the actual ruins. So as soon as you have those things, you can basically then take them over into the old ruins and just drop them off. So that's absolutely wonderful because I was really worried about that for a real quick second. I thought to myself, are we going to have some issues? Are we going to have some issues actually, you know, sustaining them? Because I was kind of thinking that, hey, you know what, maybe we're... We're not going to be able to do it, you know. Maybe uh, all my um, all my efforts are going to be for nothing because the refugees are just going to get killed in the process, and that could very well happen. Anyway, let me see. Oh, nice! We killed one of the yes. We killed one of the squires first. That's wonderful. I'd actually like to try out my new lance if I can. Oh, ho, ho, nice! That was some good damage. I like it. I like it. Okay. Maybe we can... Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, I like this lance. Okay. Usually, I'm not that big a fan of the longer reach weapons, especially when it comes to couch lancing. Because I'm just generally not a fan of couch lancing. Um, however, I feel like in Pendor, um, this is something that I actually used in the original series of Pendor all the way back in, what was it, 2012, 2013? I can't remember when, when we started that. Um, but over the course of 200 episodes, I do kind of remember some people telling me in the comments that I should use a pole arm against some bandits, and and then there you go, I use some, I use the pole arm, I use the pole arm against some bandits, and boom, we actually got quite a few, quite a few kills, and I was actually able to solo, I think, I think I was able to solo some stuff, at least that's what I remember, maybe I'm misremembering, of course. Anyway, um, yeah, so these guys are obviously great for leveling up in general, because they seem pretty easy. However, the problem with them is that they don't have any refugees, and we need as many of those as we can get our hands on. So I'm thinking what we'll probably try to do... Ooh, Red Brotherhood. Um, yeah, what we'll probably try to do is go back over to the Mist Mountain Bandits. Oh, no. Oh, hello. Nope. Goodbye. Goodbye. Don't bother me, please. Oh, no. Jatu army as well. Okay, yeah, this is... Oh, this is such a dangerous area. It really is. This is certainly not a place you want to be hanging around for any length of time. Obviously, the Jatu army is absolutely impossible for them to catch up. They, it's just... They're never going to catch us, of course. It's just not viable for them whatsoever. But there's always the possibility that there's going to be something you know, nearby a uh, much faster um, small party nearby and they're going to be the ones to catch up and uh, then get the uh, get the larger army embroiled in a battle with you. That That's the kind of thing that can happen. That, that has happened to me multiple times, actually, in, uh, in past series, at least. So, yeah, that's a thing that we have to be very aware of. That's the reason why I was talking about that whole bring a friend business, because if... You know, let's just hope that doesn't happen, but if a smaller party is nearby a larger one and they have the ability to engage upon you, they will then bring their friend. And in the in the form of the friend is obviously going to be the most, um, <laughs> the most dastardly, powerful opposing force that you've ever seen, no doubt. You know, it's kind of like the, the small Noldor parties, because if you go into the forest nearby to Laria here, then the Noldor are numerous, and there's a bunch of armies in there as well. I think there's two armies or so, usually. And, um, yeah, they are... You know what they're going to do. They're going to have some really, really small parties as well, and they're literally just going to gang up 
and try to overwhelm you and that's what happens you know they are very good at doing that anyway we've got four horses i actually do need to go and purchase some more so that i can continue to move around on the world map relatively quickly because otherwise we're not going to have the ability to do that okay so Pointsbrook is where i'm going to go next i'm just going to be a bit careful here okay so um i'm just going to be oh hired assassins no please are they actually after me please don't let them be after me that would be not very nice <laughs> that would be really bad actually okay hopefully they're not after me anyway so let's just sell this stuff i think i can sell all of it right i think i can sell all of it yeah look at that oh, well, that's actually not even entirely bad 1100 pretty good and yeah we're we're absolutely fine here town thug i don't think i need to worry about Hello, him too much and is there anyone up here i highly doubt it right yeah usually there isn't anyone up there anyway okay so that's fine now let's have a look are these hired assassins actually wanting to attack me it doesn't seem like it no no they're, they're just running away from us okay so this is what we have to do we now have to find as many aha there we go this is the kind of parties that we want to find there's usually a bunch of them um having refugees in the prisoners hold and we need to rescue as many of them as we can get our hands on one thing I'm actually wondering about, um, I think, oh yeah, I'm, I think I may have made a slight error with my level up. Yeah, yeah, I think I may have made a slight problem there. Okay, so what is the slight problem? Well, the slight problem is that I didn't spec into leadership, first of all. Um, I not, I'm not entirely sure if I could have spec'd into leadership. I don't know whether I'm maxed out right now. Um, but if I am maxed out, then obviously it's not a mistake, but if I am not maxed out, then it probably was a mistake. So it would have been good for me to actually spec into leadership because funnily enough in Pendor, uh, leadership is actually really good and it does provide you with 10 additional party size when in the early game, 10 additional party size is absolutely fantastic. It's so, so good. And obviously if you are able to you're going to be able to, uh, you know, just field some much, much better troops, um, more troops, and, and so on. Obviously, this is not actually the way you want to really, ideally at least, progress in the game, um, which is, is funny considering, you know, uh, <laughs> I'm not as proficient as I used to be in Pendor, let's just say that. I used to be much, much better at, um, you know, knowing where to go and what to do and so on and so forth, but... I'm kind of taking things a little bit differently this time. I'm kind of prioritizing the um, the old ruins and uh, the the, uh, the hideout and so on and so forth. I'm I'm, tr I'm trying to get that up and running as soon as possible, really, in comparison to before, where that's not what I was doing. I, uh, I, d I don't think I tried to do that beforehand. Anyway, I'm probably going to be ending this episode off here because, as you can quite clearly tell, I basically just need to run around here, try and fight as many enemies as I can get my hands on. And, uh, yeah, my leadership is not maxed out, as you can see. So I did make a mistake with specking into horse archery instead of leadership. But that's okay because we are actually extremely close to level 7 and then I can just put another point into leadership if I want to. Hilariously enough though, as I say, if you were to play this in a power gaming manner, which is obviously not what I'm attempting to do right now, but if you were to play it in a manner where you are wanting to progress as fast as possible, then it is highly recommended by numerous people, including myself, to try to maximize the amount of times you get into battles with large groups of enemies alongside allies so if you can get into a massive battle like for example with the jatu army and the enemy is the raven's turn with you know 600 800 troops then you're going to have a great time or hopefully have a great time with the amount of renown that you might be able to get so that's kind of the thing that you want to try to do get into these large battles and try to capitalize on that or you can try to take on larger bandit parties by yourself if you have a lot of confidence in your own personal fighting ability for me personally i 
don't really. As you've seen multiple times, I've gotten myself killed just because they have thrown weapons and they just target my face and it just goes bonk and I'm dead. So those are the kinds of things that I generally tend to stay away from because it's just too risky for a series. Because if I do get myself eliminated in that situation, it's back to square one. However, if you're not recording this, then it may be worth the risk. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.